uh, Catherine Mardikes, and uh, Catherine is the, uh, we've known each other for uh, about 20 years now, I think, um, uh, way back from, from my time at the University of Chicago. And uh, Catherine, uh, since uh, 2017, Catherine served as the acting president, the executive vice president, and the co-leader of the South Side unit of the League of Women Voters of Chicago. Uh, she's especially active in voter services, where she's not only organized many voter registration drives, but also put together a number of uh, candidates forums. Uh, additionally, she's the senior humanities bibliographer at the University of Chicago Library, specializing in classics and the ancient Near East, right up my alley too. Uh, so um, we're really, really uh, fortunate and, and pleased to have uh, um, Catherine with us here today to share more with us about the League of Women Voters and about um, you know, our, our rights and privileges as, as uh, voting members of this grand experiment called democracy. So <laughs> um, with that, Catherine, I'm very happy to turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, uh, my plan is to uh, whiz through a uh, PowerPoint uh, talking about the league that was just developed and uh, that will then be available uh, for all of the information in it. From you, <clears throat> excuse me, from you, Lucas, you'll be posting that. So I, I wanted to use that only out. I'm only going to stop on a few slides and then I'm going to move from there to um, everything to do with this upcoming election. And if there's time, I wanna talk a little bit about what the league is planning to do and some of the issues uh, developing for the uh, municipal election. Uh, those, those are in uh, end of February in the runoffs beginning of uh, April of the next year. Um, so that's the plan. Um, and I'll go ahead and start uh, by giving you a link to the website of the League of Women Voters of Chicago. Um, and then uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, yeah, this will work. Okay. Um, this was from a briefing that we did um, <clears throat> uh, last uh, beginning of the month. And it isn't. Hold on. Okay, that's going to click. And so the League of Women Voters is... Uh, to empower voters, to defend democracy, and uh, basically we pro promote uh, civic engagement. Um, it was founded uh, in, uh, let me get this, let me get this, so you, can you guys see the whole thing now a little bit better on your screen? Yeah, it looks perfect. Okay, great. Uh, the League of Women Voters was founded in 1920 um, out of the, uh, suffrage movement for women's right to vote from 1919. Uh, it was founded here in Chicago and the same group uh, pulled together and said, all right, now we got the vote, what are we gonna do? And it became a uh, voter education, voter registration program. And it sadly, in some ways, <laughs> it still is uh, the voter registration. We fight to make sure voting rights um, are available to all. and. Uh, we were sitting pretty, uh, we're sitting back on our laurels with, for some of this until uh, the uh, Voting Rights Act was gutted uh, a few years back and we're seeing a lot of problems. Um, don't let the name fool you. Um, men are, in, are invited. We just have, the name has such, uh, such recognition that we, we don't wanna mess with it. But we have a lot of men who have joined the league and do a lot of work with us. Uh, so we are a nonpartisan political organization, organization, a grassroots nonpartisan political organization. And we uh, encourage informed and active participation. And we influence through uh, education and advocacy. We do influence public policy and we influence legislation. Um, and these are our principles. Uh, I can read them to you, but you're all looking at this. <laughs> it, gets, it gets a little repetitive sometimes. Uh, free and fair elections, right to vote, big things, transparency in government. 
Uh, we are diverse. Uh, we are especially uh, on the south side of Chicago. Uh, it's important diversity to bring all perspectives, all issues. There's greater understanding uh, when we have a diverse membership and we reach out to diverse uh, groups. Uh, emphasizing the nonpartisan. Nonpartisan in our case means that uh, we do not endorse candidates or parties. However, we are not a political. We uh, have strong political stands on issues, uh, women's uh, reproductive rights, uh, voting rights. Um, we do not we do not think that the electoral college uh, should continue. Um, coming up, there's a referendum I'm going to mention. We do we we we're pushing that you vote yes on the referendum to uh, increase. Uh, uh, funding for the uh, park district or for the uh, nature nature preserves, um, but we are nonpartisan, and that's important. Uh, this is the structure. I'm, I would just stay here for a moment because when you join the league, you're joining a whole series of organizations. It gets really confusing. For example, when you join the, the Chicago League, you are part of the League of Members of Chicago, um, but you also are automatically part of the League of Women Voters of Illinois. And then up above, the League of Women Voters of the United States. Also, you're part of the League of Women Voters of Cook County, because Cook County pays a lot of attention to criminal justice and um, health care, because those are county, uh, those are looked at by county in, in the state of Illinois. And uh, you're also uh, become a member of the Great Lakes uh, multi, um, the there's a Michigan League and there's a there's a uh, there's a Great Lakes uh, a Lake Michigan League. I should have looked this up because I've been doing these uh, I've been doing beach cleanups and stuff for the uh, through the league for uh, the Alliance of the Great Lakes, uh, and I'm getting the two mixed up. But the league is actually Lake Michigan, so it's multi-state because several states and and uh, it's a more about the environment and then the Mississippi River Basin. A lot of people don't realize, but all the way in Chicago, we're still part of that Mississippi River Basin. And that's a separate league and it's multi-state. So you join all of those when you join, you just kind of decide where you want to do what you want to do. Uh, and that's membership. Oh, I should have stayed on that. <laughs> I didn't want to look like I was pushing y'all to become members. It's $75 to become a member. And most of that money goes to the Illinois League and the state and the US League. The US League, I understand, because they're they're arguing cases before the Supreme Court. They have a huge staff. Um, we only get of that $75, I think we get like eight. <laughs> so, so we have to do a lot of other fun. Oh, that's what this slide is. Uh, and we have each you know, each level has positions. So the national uh the issues uh for the national level, trickle down. So uh, it's at the national level that uh, we worked on uh, coming to a consensus that we think the electoral college should be abolished. And so that means that's also a stand all the way down. You can you can make all the noise you want about that as a league member um, because it's a national position. There are Illinois positions and uh, same thing and then but we have our own local positions that we push um and uh that's in this document where we stand um and uh how do we come up with what we represent what we what we back we do a study they're famous studies um that are actually published they're so in, in depth we started one on legalizing marijuana and uh we were in the middle of our study, the long study, when uh, the law changed. It's like, oh, okay, that's over. So sometimes, sometimes we study a little too long to have an impact. Um, we have briefings. Those are uh, information where we get together and we bring people in to, to go through these. We then vote consensus, and then we just lobby and work hard to uh, push it forward, what we feel. 
Um, voter services is obviously our one of our biggest groups uh, activities and that uh, registering voters. We register voters in high schools, uh, colleges. We, we do, I, I should stop and say, um, in addition to um, those different levels of leagues within Chicago, because we're so big, we actually also have something called units. And units are a little bit smaller group that comes together and works on even more local kinds of things. So I'm with, along with Melanie Nordstrom, I am a co-leader of the Southside unit. When we're not in the pandemic, we meet at the university church on campus. And um, we have taken on all kinds of things. Our unit um, for voter registration, we concentrate on high schools on the South side. We, uh, we do Chicago State. We've done, uh, we do, uh, of the, of the uh, we do five of the city colleges. We, I don't know how we ended up with Malcolm X. Not very South, is it? But, <laughs> but somehow we ended up with Malcolm X as well. Um, and we do voter registration at retirement homes. We always have a voter registration event at Montgomery Place, for example. Um, and we do, uh, those are the voter registration. And we also do um, present to schools and communities here. I don't need to look very far for an example of us presenting uh, voter education to community organizations. We're doing that right now. Um, and this will be really important coming up. Uh, we conduct candidate forums and debates with community partners. Uh, there are 15 aldermen who will not be continuing. That's a guaranteed 15 candidate forums that the league will be putting on. And then there, on top of that, there are a number of competitive districts. Burke's uh, district is competitive for very, for obvious reasons. Um, the uh, ninth ward, it was really close last time. The same two candidates are going again. So we want to make sure we offer. So we'll have a minimum of 20 candidate forms. Um, and on the South side, we'll have quite a few. Uh, in addition to close races, we will do any, we will do a form for any organization that asks us to do one. So it might not be on the top of our list, but we will do it. We'll also have, uh, we are, uh, because it's, uh, the mayor is of Chicago, we do the um, mayoral uh, forums. We work with ABC News uh, for one on the television, on television. Um, that one, we probably this coming year will only do a runoff because it's very difficult with so many candidates, but we'll probably work again with uh, the DuSable Museum to do the larger one. Uh, we also had one with, um, uh, uh, I can't remember who we worked with with that, but down at Chicago State. Oh, yeah, um, 91.5. Uh, we had it. And then last time we had a uh, candidates forum for the treasurer. We had it here on campus. We worked with a student group and uh, we had Joan Esposito come in and moderate that. So it's a lot of work, but it's really important work. Um, and then we do poll watching as well. And we push our members to uh, sign up to be election judges uh, and uh, poll workers in general. Uh, that was a lot. Uh, lots of things, lots of, we, uh, Chicago Focus is a great one. Uh, it, we have an annual meeting. State of the city was wonderful. We have, we did our centennial and we had the mayor. The last one we had um, Arnie Duncan and Joe Ferguson who talked about some different things. Uh, they're just, they're really good. And you can actually go to the website and pull up the videos of those things. Uh, because since we've been moving to doing so many things on Zoom, we actually, another Zoom silver lining, we have, uh, we have video recordings of everything. Um, our current priorities uh, from that long list are voting rights as usual, electoral reform, reproductive rights that bumped right up to the top. Uh, and uh, environmental action, uh, plastics in particular is what that committee is working hard on, not to mention pushing the referendum. Uh, police reform and public policy and gun violence is part of that as well. They often split into two because they're not exactly the same. And transparency in government. 
uh, we have a, uh, a government committee, city government committee, uh, which observes every meeting and uh, many of the, uh, of the committee meetings. So that's it. <laughs> okay. So let's get let's get to what you're really here for. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing so it, it's not too confusing. And I am going to put a whole lot of links uh, web to websites URLs in the chat, and you can uh, copy that whole thing and have it, or click on it as you go. But um, and I'll be sure and put that in at the end once we've gone through, but it, I just wanted you to have that now. And I'm going to share my screen. Any questions so far? I'm sorry. Um, you can interrupt me at any time uh, for a question. Um, it's hard for me to see hands uh, or the chat, when, especially when I'm screen sharing. Uh, so Lucas, if there are questions, can I count on you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be very happy to, if there's anything in the chat, feel free uh, to put that in the chat and we can certainly, uh, well, at the end, of course, definitely have time for, okay. for that. So you're w welcome to also to hold on to that question if you want yeah. at the end. But, and uh, all those um, those links, Catherine, I have them right here. I'll be happy to paste that into the chat box if if you'd like. Oh, did I not hit push it? They didn't um, show up? I, I'm not... I didn't push. <laughs> I didn't hit click return or whatever <laughs> yeah I, let me try one more time oh, oh okay. you know what i'm hitting i'm hitting shift uh, i'm seeing <laughs> yep, there they all are um, they're sitting they're sitting even here evenly here so i don't <laughs> mess that up okay there they all are i'm sorry about that thank you for thank you for letting me know i wouldn't have ever even figured it out um also, I, just another shout out to our Southside unit. We were the ones that instigated um, the changing of uh, uh, Congress Parkway to Ida B. Wells Drive. That was a Southside unit. Uh, we started it. We wanted to change Balbo Drive, a fascist uh, from, <laughs> a terrible fascist from Italy who was only in Chicago for like two days or something. Uh, but. Uh, that didn't work out, but we got Congress, which was actually a lot more fun. And we were also the ones who started a program for voting in Cook County Jail. Uh, you lose your, uh, while you're in prison in, in Illinois, you lose your voting rights. Uh, you are no longer registered and you cannot vote. But people in Cook County Jail are awaiting trial and all are innocent until proven guilty. So we worked with uh, Sheriff Dart to set this program up and uh, we, and then we pulled in uh, Chicago votes, thank goodness, because uh, they took over the mechanics of it and we were able to just like keep keep it going. And then we went on and wrote legislation so that now uh, in the Cook County Jail, uh, through the legislation that we worked on, uh, because there are over 3 million uh, residents in Cook County, uh, they have to have uh, actual voting machines in the jail. And uh, the throughout the rest of the of the state because there aren't any uh not that large uh they have to offer uh a voter registration uh by mail uh application and a a vote by mail application to every inmate in the county jails across the state which is a good thing um do you know um i uh that in illinois um and spread the word because it's it's a crazy urban myth that I cannot get rid of, uh, even when I'm telling people to their faces. Um, in Illinois, uh, as soon as you leave prison, you can go and register to vote, um, even on parole. Uh, we have county, you know, states around us with different uh, different rules. We've got noise and then and all the time on television, and it's really hard uh, to convince people. Um, and I was doing voter registration in Cook County Jail, and uh, they, um, the um, the um, inmates there, um, I told them this, and they said, what? And I, and I had to convince them, right? And then right before they all left, three of them came back over to me and said, yeah, but we can't vote for president, can we? Yes, you can vote. So it's just an impossible thing to get rid of. So if you guys can help with that, that would be great. Um, cause it's tough. So now on to this election coming up. 
Catherine? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if my little hand is showing, um, but I'm concerned about the um, election judges because yes. I've been hearing that we need 3,000 of them yes. in, in a month, you know, in another, in another six weeks. Absolutely. And um, the problem, of course, has been that most of us are seniors who are judges, and they're the ones who didn't come during the pandemic because of, of, of uh, likelihood of you know, contamination. Um, and so I'm, I'm really concerned. Uh, nobody says anything about training judges. They just say we need judges. And I remember I, I was trained just before the, the pandemic hit. So I've never been a judge because the minute I got, in fact, while we were being oh. trained, we had to wear, we had to start wearing masks. That's oh, how, yeah. how close it was. And so I've never done it. And so three years ago, training and never doing it, I, I wouldn't feel competent to go and do it. But during that election, they just said to college and high school kids, come on in, come on in. You don't have to be trained. We'll just, you know, we'll tell you what to do. So that are was we gonna, a tough time. Yeah. Are we going to be like that again this time, needing 3,000 more judges? No, um, uh, um, they have been working on that. In fact, I was a poll watcher uh, uh, down in, uh, down, I don't remember what precinct, but the 10th Ward area. And um and I was so impressed with how many judges they had there and how many were young, really bright eyed kids. And they they had older people there. And it, it's a nice thing where they put so, an experienced person with um, the new ones. But some of these younger judges were experienced. I think they started doing it about the time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. 2020 election. Um, they've also, I'm going to talk about this, but maybe I can talk about it now since you asked the question. Um, the league, the um, Chicago, you know, we have a new ward map, uh, new city map, new, new state map because of the census. Uh, so your districts and your wards and everything are changing. And, and let me just say this now, if you are registered pretty much by, by today, because they came uh, last week, all last week, uh, you should have gotten your new voter registration card. Are you all, get, did you all pretty much get that? Yes, and, if and many, people have been, many people have been commenting that they've been changed. Uh, everyone, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's crazy. And if you don't have it, um, I give you a link here. Um, which link is this here? The link for check, check for your voting site and registration status. So that's uh, that's right in the middle of these links that I gave you. Um, hold on. Oops. Can you guys see a different thing on the screen? Oh, I'm not screen sharing. You can't see anything. Perfect. <laughs> I accidentally clicked on it and it opened and I'm I can't ever tell what's going on. Let me put this here again so that you can go there and put in to find out if you did not get your little vote. And by the way, that voter registration card, if you, especially young people, um, let them know that that is an official ID. They don't have a lot of IDs and they have hardly any with their addresses on it. And this is one of those few official IDs, especially if you, and you should use it too, if, if you haven't gotten your uh, real uh, driver, real ID driver's license yet. It's perfect because you need all these things with your address on them. Uh, so don't throw that away. I always just tuck it in my wallet. And a friend of mine who lives in New York, she um, she um, has a New York driver's license. She lived in New York, but hadn't changed her driver's license. And she went to get a package at the post office and they wouldn't give it to her because she didn't have. And she remembered what I told her. She had tucked her voter ID uh, card in there and she like pulled it out and said, oh my God, I have this, I have this. So it, it worked out for her. Um, so Jenny, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna find for you. Uh, oh, you know what? Look, see the very last one here from the Board of Elections on decreasing precincts, the very last in the, in the chat. Okay. I'm going to put it in again. It's an it's a news article that I think will answer your questions. Um, they don't need as many. They 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 have fewer precincts. Um, they 
and they will not need as many judges and they are finding them. But please, please, anyone here who wants to do it, please sign up to become a judge because uh, we need them. All right. Okay, I better get going with this. Um, and and this will be available, so don't worry. Uh, right, Lucas, this will be available to everyone? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. We'll, so, make, so, yeah, we'll make these links available. So yeah. you might not, you know, if I go through it, it's like the, mm -hmm. that information will still be available. Yeah. Okay? And I think Mary had her hand raised. Oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Before you move on to the election, I wanted to ask you a little more about your policy statements, or you said something about, uh, well, your list of priorities of issues included something around abortion rights. Uh, that's not necessarily the way you put it, but how do you work up a position on something like that that's such a hot political issue without being political? Um, that's, uh, you. That has been on our uh, on our one of our positions for a long time, for for decades, all the way back. So we oh. haven't changed that. So that's the first thing. Uh, it was studied, and it and we we have those studies, and they show health of the health of people, the health of moderates. It was great detail, with lots of statistics, and we don't. We don't we don't engage in rhetoric. We don't get noisy. We just try and say, for these reasons, we support um, the right to abortion. Yes, you're right. That is. Uh, but you notice that I said reproductive rights, didn't I? Even in telling you, I yes, was trying yes. to tamp down the noise just a little. Of course, of course, it's got to be worded better than I did. But <laughs> no, I mean it's a problem. It's it's a problem because um, I would love to talk more about this, but the problem is is that all of a sudden certain issues have been so tied to one party or the other that we actually look like we're favoring a party uh, when. For, for this whole group of issues, um, voting rights, for example, um, you know, reproductive rights, uh, even, even uh, the electoral college of all it, it, And unfortunately, it's more, the, the climate has become so hyper-partisan that you can't have, you can't support an issue without looking like you're being partisan, but we're not. Okay. We're about the issue and only the issue. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Thank you very much sure. for elucidating okay. that. All right. Well, let's get started on a few things. Here are some key dates I thought we could start with, uh, just so you have them. Uh, and this will be especially useful uh, when you uh, have this PowerPoint for yourself, if you want. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, well, no, that's something else. So these are some key, key dates, but those dates are going to show up as I talk, go through everything. So I'm not going to spend any time on them. Um, so first of all, I'm going to start with how to vote. You've got three <laughs> ways to vote. Oh, does someone have a question? Okay. Um, vote by mail. Vote by mail has always been popular in the state of Illinois. Uh, we have a no excuse uh, absentee ballot or vote by mail option in in uh, in Illinois. You, it's just for convenience. Do what you want. Um, and um, it became very popular during the pandemic, as you can imagine. Uh, people were wanting to stay home. And some wonderful things that happened during, in order to facilitate uh, during the pandemic, stayed on. And one of these are these drop boxes. Uh, the drop boxes are still available, uh, but so you can get your vote, get your ballot by mail. I, uh, in there, you'll find a link to, um, in the chat, you'll find a link for requesting a ballot. Uh, yeah, Susan. Uh, you're muted. You're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Okay. And this is a very specific question, so I, I didn't want to interrupt you. Um, That's okay. But, um, so vote by mail or absentee ballot. Um, does that have to be sent to and returned from the person's address on their registration? I'm thinking, no. 
I'm no, sorry. because that, no, it doesn't. For those who are using it just for convenience, which has become most of the people who are using it, um, they do uh, have it sent to their home. It's true. Uh, but it originally was you were absent. And let's say that you're in, uh, you are uh, teaching at an institution in Massachusetts for the quarter. You, you're a guest lecturer there. I'm just making something up. Um, but you still want to vote. Uh, all of these students on campus uh, are students who go to another uh, college, is probably a better example, than, um, they can still vote in Illinois. So you put in the address to uh, where you want the uh, ballot to be sent, okay? I'm thinking specifically of my daughter who, who's currently living in Vancouver, but still uses this address. Uh, oh, if she is uh, in Canada, can, can she receive her ballot there? Ish, and she's still and she's a still a registered voter, right? Yes, she is. Yeah, especially since she's in Vancouver. If she were in, say, California, um, it would be uh, I would have to say she should register to vote there if that's where she's living. But no, she's living outside of the country. She should, and she gets to still vote, and she can use your address, no question, um, because your address is is going to give her a fuller ballot. Uh, than the uh, so, uh, foreigners abroad voting, which only gives you like president and stuff. It's, 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 yes, okay. yes, it's, it's a bit of a cheat, but it's a great workaround. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so, uh, so once you get your ballot, uh, and here are the dates, uh, you, uh, you then can fill it out and put it back in the special envelope. And then it, it, you can drop it in a mailbox. The postage is paid. You can do that if it's early. Uh, if it's starting to get late or you have not uh, gotten over <laughs> what happened with the, with the mail <laughs> uh, during the pandemic, uh, then you might want to play it safe and put it in a drop box. Um, the drop boxes are obviously uh, at the Board of Elections and at every early voting site. But I do state there is one exception, and that is uh, there's a uh, three, four day early voting site on campus. Um, they do not have a drop box. So you'll have to go to one of the drop boxes. Here's a list of all the drop boxes. It's also um, in the chat. And I will talk about where those early voting sites are in the next slide. Um, is everyone have any more questions about early voting? Okay. Okay. Early, I mean, not early voting, absent mail, absentee ballot voting. Is what I right. do, Catherine. Oh. Uh, if we if we got a ballot, um, a mailed ballot last at the last election, are we automatically registered now for the next one? That was supposedly the case, but I'm not sure. No, you're not. You have to put yourself on an automatic voter registration. Oh, the last election is in the primary? Yes. You should. And you, and, and uh, oops. Uh, and um, they're gonna be sending them out uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, let's see what you, you should get one. Um, uh, if you fill that out, yes. Because they now are, they are now, uh, they created a autumn, uh, a permanent vote by mail database. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to put yourself on it. Uh, you also have to, uh, in Chicago, you, in Illinois, you do not need to declare a party. In some states, you have to declare your party and you can only vote in that, in that primary for that party. They're very, uh, Iowa, for example. Um, when you register to vote, you say you're, if you're a Democrat, uh, you know, Republican, Libertarian, or whatever, Green. And when the primary comes, you can only vote in the primary of your declared party. We don't do that. Not happening. Uh, but so, so when I say this, I don't want it to be confused. To do early voting, um, to get to not early voting, to do um, vote by mail every time, you have to declare your party because they need to know which primary ballot to send you, okay? So it's one of the few times in Illinois where you have to declare your party. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
Um, so early voting, uh, early voting, uh, it got pushed back. Um, it's now starting October 7th in, and this is at the super site down at 191st Street, uh, North Clark and at the board of elections, 69 West Washington on the sixth floor. Um, what you're all probably interested in is the early voting sites throughout the wards. Every ward, uh, every one of the 50 wards has an early voting site. Uh, here are the early voting sites for the areas uh, around the Hyde Park Kenwood Woodlawn area. So uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Center on Cottage, Jackson Park on Stony Island, and the Bessie Coleman Library on 63rd. That is also where you will find a drop box. So if you if you have a ballot, you can drop it in those. Now, something I want to tell you um, is that all of those early voting sites will be open for you on election day too. Okay, this is something people do not know. So if you are all befuddled about where the heck your precinct is, <laughs> you can always go and you don't have time to figure it out. You can always go to one of your early voting sites on election day and vote there. Okay. Another thing, um, voter registration uh, will be closing for mail-in voter registration uh, uh, applications on the 11th, and then it'll close again. Um, uh, let me get this one uh, on the 23rd for for voter registration um, by uh, on online. Uh, but at early voting sites and at your polling site, you can register to vote the same day. OK, just make sure you take two forms of ID, one that has your address on it. OK. All right. Um, now, this is a great thing here because uh, you all uh, presumably live in the area, and that is um, that uh, for the last few uh, voting cycles, uh, the uh, Board of Elections has come to the University of Chicago and set up an early voting site for these days, Wednesday through Friday uh, in Reynolds Club, and it's a great thing. Uh, I was encouraging everyone to do this during the primary because unfortunately during the primary, um, the, uh, none of the students were here. They had the primary so late because they hadn't gotten the maps worked out yet. Uh, so I was, saying, I was trying to get everybody I knew to go there so that they, they wouldn't lose their early voting site to come general. So, uh, but it's there. Um, the only thing about it is there's no Dropbox, okay? All right. Um, and then finally on election day. Uh, and uh, your voter registration card will have uh, your precinct and should have your voting site. But this will take you to your voting site actually. Um, and you can find out where, where you vote. No ID is required unless you uh, registered, uh, registered without giving them full information, then you need to show an ID. Um, and uh, any questions about same day voting? I think you guys, I think you guys got that drill down, don't you? <laughs> All right, let's get to some stuff. Okay, this is the good stuff. Okay, researching your ballot. Uh, I don't care how, how much you know about politics and the state and the county and the, and the city. Those ballots are full of so much that you have to figure out, right? I mean, all I have to do is say the word judges and you're all cringing already, aren't you? <laughs> Exactly. Okay, there are some great ways of figuring this out. Um, the best way is the uh, Illinois Voter Guide. Uh, the, the League of Women Voters of Illinois has put this together. I'm gonna show you some slides at the end uh, coming up after I've gone through these. Uh, it, isn't, it isn't supposed to go live until tomorrow. I actually wanted to, to click on it and show you, uh, but I'm not able. Uh, they don't have the stuff I don't have all the candidate information. They haven't revamped it since the primary. So th then they're working hard on that. Um, and I'll tell you more about what's in it uh, in a bit, but it's great. And you, you put in your address and you pull up a copy of your ballot so you know exactly what's on your ballot. The WTTW video uh, voter guide 
is another wonderful thing. Uh, the league works with WTTW. Uh, Cook County uh, uh, worked with them for this election. We will be working with them for the municipal elections and we'll make sure and shepherd candidates through and they're two minute videos is what they all are. Um, uh, every candidate gets two minutes and uh, if they show up. And uh, right now it's, it's still on the primary. <laughs> they haven't they haven't switched it over to the general, but I left it because you can go there because anyone who is voting in the primary, I mean anyone who was on the ballot in the primary, you just have to know who's going to be on your ballot and you can still use it. When the Illinois Voter Guide comes open, we have links to all of those under each candidate. So you don't even have to go to the guide. You can get to all of those videos from the Illinois Voter Guide. And then judges. My favorite besides the Illinois Voter Guide, which aggregates uh, uh, the recommendations of the 13 uh, bar associations. My favorite is Injustice Watch. Has anybody used Injustice Watch before? I love it. And, this, and it too will allow you to put your address in and only pull up the judges that are gonna be on your ballot. Same with the Illinois Voter Guide. That's the best thing because you need to know which judges to research, right? But then they do all the research for you. Um, they not only give you those bar association recommendations, but they they give you all kinds of other in-depth information. And it's nonpartisan. Um, it's just information. You make your own judgment, okay? And uh, it's it's important. Uh, and vote for judges is another one uh, that, that uh, people use. Um, but it's really important because voting, uh, confirming judges, you know, I mean, it's tough because there are some bad judges and I, uh, and it, people think it's just impossible to get a bad judge out. Uh, in 2020, I think we got three judges out just by pushing, but it, it's a huge campaign to do that. Um, if you forget and you're voting and you didn't do your research on your judges don't vote them at, don't vote at all uh because it's uh it's based on the people who voted you know if this many if this percentage i think was it 60 percent? i don't remember what it is but um i should have looked that up but there's a percentage of those who are voting. uh so don't vote if you don't know because you don't want to skew the percentage uh for people and um um what I do, um, if you're voting in person or um, you know early or on election day, I make my uh, vote no cheat sheet. It's a little just, I write the names of the ones I'm gonna vote no and I, I go and I find them and I mark no and then I mark the rest. And, uh, and then my cheat sheet gets passed all over Hyde Park. <laughs> it gets passed by email too, uh, just so people know. Uh, uh, and I just base it on, you know, very straightforward stuff. Okay, um, now here's something that you may not have heard. Uh, there are two other things and uh, on the on your ballot, and they're at the very bottom of the ballot. So underneath the judges, all the way down, you will have a couple. Uh, actually, the con the constitutional amendment may be higher up. I know that the referendum on the forest preserves is. Uh, is at the very bottom. So please go down and vote. Uh, this is an issue that we have worked on and we are comfortable uh, pushing our recommendation out to you all. We strongly recommend that you vote yes. Uh, the, the, uh, the forest preserves uh, cannot increase their budget without doing this because they're part of some, the constitution locks them in to not getting an increase. So they truly, have to do this to get the tiniest increase. Um, it is from property tax, it's a quarter of a cent and um, the most most people will have to pay in addition for it in a year is around $20. But it's, it's, it's a small amount and they, we really need, those forest preserves are just doing so much for the city, they're really important. Any questions? Oh, the other one is uh, Illinois uh, right to, uh, to collective bargaining. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I haven't done the research on that. My knee re jerk reaction goes one way, but I don't know what unintended consequences there are. So I, I still have to do research for myself on that one. The league isn't 
isn't saying one way or the other. We did support the fair tax that failed, by the way, um, in the last election, which was supposed to help us get out of our debt, debt crisis and pension problems. Okay, so I'm gonna go show you a few screenshots now of the Illinois voter guide so you get a sense of what's there. So, um, hello, this is it. <laughs> That's the URL down there. I, I also gave it to you in this in the chat. And um, these are the kind of the things you can do. Um, I'm sending you there so you'll get a copy of your ballot and see what's on it, can research it and mark it. But you can also check your voter registration from there. Uh, you can register to vote. This is from the primary. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that date. Uh, <laughs> ignore April 6th, okay? <laughs> this is from the primary. Uh, but uh, it'll tell you where your drop boxes are. Um, it will um, gives you uh, election protection information. And uh, the, last, the last button is what I'm after here today, and that is find out what's on your ballot. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You type in your address and it pulls this up. You can sign in if you want, create an account, and then it'll know you every time you go for every election. It'll also allow you, if you if you only get so far uh, and you want to save it, sign in and it'll save it. Next time you come back, it'll take you right where you were. Uh, but it'll have, it starts with the federal, then it goes to state, then it goes to county, then it goes to, uh, and, and it, it'll all be there. This is a fake candidate. And um, so you click on her and um, you can, this is, two slides, you can see her information, you know, click on all of these issues that they were able to put information into. It, we don't have a WTTW vote, uh, video guide, but it would be here. We haven't, uh, the league does surveys and publishes the results of our surveys in this spot as well. We'll be doing that uh, for, the, uh, for the election in, um, uh, municipal election for the, uh, district uh, uh, council uh, members for the police districts uh, will definitely want to uh, have a re uh, a um, a um, survey and ask them some very pointed questions. Uh, the school board will be elected, but not for some time. So that's not coming up. And it's important to get information because you can see across the country with school boards that there's a lot of wackadoos uh, running for some offices. <laughs> That wasn't very politic of me, was it? <laughs> anyway, so um, then once you've just read about them all, then you can click, let's say, Selena is your, your choice. You can add her to your ballot. So that one's taken. Then you keep going through them all until you've gone through all of them. Okay. Uh, this is what it looks like for the judges. It'll, um, it'll have the 13 highly, it's right there. Just, you can just like, eyeball a candidate right off, uh, right there, or you can click on it and see who's recommending, which associations are recommending, which are not. It might make a difference to you. Um, but it, it doesn't have the deep information that in Justice Watch, but this is all you need. Um, this will get you what you want, where you can go through and mark, okay? And these are the kinds of things um, that we're talking about. Uh, all of these things uh, are uh, what we're able to do. Uh, all this information is nonpartisan. Uh, it's taken from their uh, candidates' websites. Even, even their preferred photo is taken. <laughs> you know, it's funny that the trouble you can get into when you start putting stuff in. It's like even their photo is from their uh, website. And anyone, any candidate who has a problem with something automatically we listen to them, figure it out, okay? Um, and uh, again, this is this is what we've got, okay? Um, so I, oh good, we have, okay, yeah. Kathy, what you got? Yeah, yes, uh, coming back to what Mary uh, was asking about, um, since you're a 501c3, mm -hmm. um, I, I can see how, it would be difficult to do things like advocacy, which you say you all do. Um, and also, um, how do you, how, do, how does your organization thread its way through this 
you know, <laughs> difficult thing because 501c3s are supposed to remain very neutral and yet you do have a little bit of advocacy for different issues going on. So how do you all get yeah. that done uh, and keep your uh, not-for-profit status? Yeah, well, um, I'll tell you how it was until uh, three or four years ago. Uh, we had a 501c4 and a 501c3. Right. The 501c4 was our education fund and it uh, it was separate, okay? And then all the other stuff was in the 501c3. Uh, we worked with a um, pro bono lawyer from Kat and Muchen to investigate the possibility of pulling these together because, and we found that we could very easily do that. And here's, here's the thing that we didn't know uh, that moved us into that. Uh, you, there are different ways of, of, of evaluating an organization, and one is the amount of time that everyone spends on different things, but the other is by how much money is spent, and we don't even come close. You know, even we have a bookmark. It has nothing political on it except what's going on, but yes, we will make buttons. Like, we, we made some... Um, some pro-choice buttons. Okay, we have to list that as as a part of the finances. And and you know, we get killed because we have to have rent downtown. We're not going to ever get close <laughs> to spending. A well, well, my my question is, uh, so is there an IRS law that mm -hmm. tells you the limits of yes. spending and then the limits of how far you can go? Absolutely, absolutely. So what are the limits of spending that you have to? I'm trying to remember. It's a small amount and we don't come close. I, I, it could be as high as 20% and, and we're not, we're coming in under five as far as I can tell. 20% um, of your budget or 20%? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but don't quote me on that, please, Kathy. Um, it's, well, it's, I, I'm just asking with... in, in general because yeah. obviously you have to consult Absolutely. the exact thing and that's what your uh, yeah. attor attorneys did for you they did they did and and it, it was a long complicated process we had to change bylaws we had to I, I believe it because of what happened in congress under Nunes uh from california he really went after all kinds of organizations uh to, to get uh the 501c4s uh, in to be exactly and 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 put down a lot of 501c3s you know now it it, it was painful it was uh two different lawyers um it was an accountant we had to work with the legal promoters of, of us and state it was crazy but we did it and uh we haven't had any trouble uh, trouble at all complying um it helps to be nonpartisan right off. That 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 throws out so much right away. Um, but issues, yeah, they're political, and we count them. Well, more power to you all. Thank you for doing that and for giving us this wonderful presentation. Oh, great, great. Any more questions coming up? Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, uh, is it easier to vote for judges when you're voting by mail? Because Boy, I'm it. thinking you can have your ballot right in front of you while you're sitting and looking at uh, the different sites that you mentioned in justice and vote for judges. And oh, so it God. seems to me that that would be easier than Absolutely. taking all these recommendations into the polling place. Oh, you're so right. That is such a good thing. Uh, that is true. Now, Two things that I should have mentioned. One, you can uh, you can print whatever you do from the Illinois Voter Guide, or you can email it to yourself. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to be, get an account to do either of those. Um, and you can take that with you if you want. Um, the other thing, uh, the, the printed version. The other thing, and if anyone votes outside of Chicago, uh, don't listen to me right now. Uh, in Chicago, they allow you to open your phone and get information off your phone, okay? okay. Outside of Chicago in the collar counties, uh, you will run into uh, election judges who will say, put that away right now. 
Uh, it's an old, it's an old thing from back when people were, you know, trying to buy votes or something. I don't know, you know, proof. I, it's crazy, but most people they're getting information off of their phone, and Chicago recognizes that. Yeah. Thank you. But you're absolutely right. I don't know why I always go vote early. I'm, I always work election day, and I, I don't know why I don't do the absentee. I just like going, <laughs> so I take my cheat sheet. <laughs> Yes, I think there's something to the whole ceremony of voting in person. That's Isn't not there? Bad. I don't know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I, I got one question, sure. Catherine. If, um, it, are there any elections in which uh, non-citizens, so like green card holding permanent residents, are able to participate? Uh, not, not in the, not in the uh state county mm -hmm. or uh city no okay yeah just wanted to no okay. I was, I and was if you're ever helping people i do a lot of voter registration um i actually um take the form and ask them if they're citizen ask them their how old they are and mark that because on the uh, mail-in form which most of us use it all that those questions almost look like a border and the sad thing is is if if it isn't checked citizen yes or no the board of elections has to throw it in the trash um it used to be oh honest mistakes uh but since 2016 um people can lose the ability to go on to become citizens because of this infraction right mm -hmm. so we're just hypersensitive now to the issue and super super careful um it, because you know they one if they don't do it it'll get thrown in the trash two if they're if it's wrong it 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 could be a problem for them if you know if they aren't citizens yeah uh okay. yeah so well um we're going to be doing a lot of candidate forms so i can just say and anyone who's interested in uh taking part in uh any of that or uh actually um uh partnering with us, uh, you know, you guys could partner with us too. Uh, for for uh, We have an opening in the fourth ward. Sophia King is not uh, is running for mayor. And so that will be open. Uh, Leslie Hairston in the fifth ward is retiring. Uh, the 20th ward, uh, Jeanette Taylor is going, is running for reelection. I don't know whether that will be uh, particularly interesting if, if Everybody, if she scares off all, all everybody, we, we'll probably leave that one alone. Um, but you know, uh, with those two, there are going to be a lot of candidates. Uh, if you don't want to get in on the beginning, uh, we may have to hold runoffs for those. We'll definitely have to hold runoffs for a lot of these, where we have eight candidates. Chance of anyone. If we want to or some group wants to partner with you, do we go to your website or is there a specific email address? Well, since we're all south here, I would say you want to, you want to send a message to me because I'm going to put my um, email address in the chat. Uh, I, I, know of, I know of a group that would like to partner with you, probably. All right. Well, can they get a hold of me? Uh, remind me that I met you here. <laughs> so All right. Keep my head straight. <laughs> um, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Allie, you have another question? Yes. Uh, what does uh, the league think of ranked choice voting? It seems to me that in these elections where there are just so many candidates that uh, it could be a, a, a situation where the one that is the best candidate doesn't win because all the other candidates are dividing up their votes. You're absolutely right. And the league uh, did study that. And we are in favor of ranked choice voting. And it's it's not it's exactly what you said, Ellie. But add to it. There are a lot of reasons. The one that I always remember, but I live around young people. Uh, young people are always telling you, eh, my vote doesn't count anyway. And with ranked choice voting, uh, they know their vote counts. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, if they're for uh, a candidate in a, in a party even that doesn't get a lot of votes, uh, they can vote for that candidate knowing that in all likelihood it's not going to happen. Uh, but they'll know at least their second choice. They'll be able 
it's a better way for them to feel that they've contributed uh, while still making their statement that they want to make. So yes. what is the way that we can support that in Illinois? Gosh, isn't that a good question? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've done some letter writing. I don't know. That's a good question, Jenny. We could partner on that and come up with some. Yeah. I, I don't know. Are you, can you guys, uh, is, does your status let, let you take part in things like that? <laughs> uh, you, you know, it, it did make a difference. Was that in a, I can't remember the state where the party, the, the woman who won was actually everybody's second choice yes because she got a majority there and not for first choice yeah. and it's but a weird thing to say I, I forgot the name of the state but that's what happened well, new york went through a crazy one um and then what was it was it did maine have something going uh one of them had a partial rank choice i didn't i, I didn't quite figure that one out um I was busy looking at something else when that was going on. <laughs> There's so much to look at these days. Oh my gosh. Is that and, something and, we should raise with our senators and representatives then? The state? Yes, yes. Here's the hard thing. Um, I, for that one, yes, I think you should. Uh, it's very difficult for us who live in Illinois to push our senators and even our con our Congress uh, person to because uh, they're already for it. Uh, and so, you know, uh, a lot of times we do letter writing campaigns to, you know, sister district and different things like that. Well, actually, that isn't a league thing. That's my partisan work. I should not mention that. Um, but uh, there's there are ways you can do it, but it but it, it's frustrating. It, it, it is frustrating for us uh, when, especially with the where we're we're ranked. Gosh, where are we ranked? In the top top five, maybe top maybe it's top ten states in the country uh, for having good voting rights laws. Uh, my home state, Missouri, is 49th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, so it's hard, you know, it, it, it's hard for us to make a difference because it, it's best when people hear from their constituents, you know. But it's hard. But letter writing campaigns are good. Thank um, you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, boy, the just this has been so insightful and so much great information, so many resources. So yeah, and if for for those you can certainly if you save the chat and uh, refer back to those, but we'll uh, we'll save that here and um, and and share this recording and, and the, the resources that Catherine's shared with us. Uh, so you can revisit that at your own leisure. Um, so, Could you say but, how yeah. to save the chat? Oh, uh, I, I don't know if, if everyone's able to do it. Hopefully, maybe, maybe not, but uh, yeah, sure. maybe only I can because I'm uh, the host here. But I oh. see a, three little dots next to the smiley face in the chat window. <laughs> and, and, and one of those is if you go put chat. your cursor in chat mm -hmm. um, and let's say you go to the go to the top of the one that I said it says Chicago mm -hmm. Board of Elections. If you put your cursor right in front of the C and then just drag, don't lift up, it just drag mm -hmm. your cursor, just keep dragging, dragging, dragging. It'll until you get to the bottom, and then you can let go, and then you can do oh, copy and control paste. C on your keyboard. Control mm -hmm. C. And then you can pop it into a Word document, an email, a notepad document, and it should it. So that's that's how you that's how you paste. You, uh, uh, Lucas, it did work. Good. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. great. I just I just clicked on the three dots and it immediately said chat chat saved. Oh, yeah. that's great. Great, so, great. So uh, that's really good. News. I don't know where, but it's saved. Right. <laughs> uh, it goes automatically to your computer, but the question is, do you where? have a folder set up to no. put it in? Somewhere. No. Um, in my experience, when the Zoom quits, sometimes that folder pops right up. Oh. But <laughs> he says right. that now. <laughs> you're, you're you're right, uh, Lucas. The folder will pop up, yeah. uh, or yeah. at least the place in your. Yeah. Yeah. email will pop up at the bottom yeah but again we'll we'll be distributing all this so, okay 
Great. And actually, if any of you decide to join uh, the league, let me know because I want to make sure you know about the South Side Unit and 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 join in all of our local efforts. Yeah, yeah and and uh, so yeah, the and the the URL for the league itself uh, or the. Uh, do you want me to put it in again? Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put mm -hmm. in all of the things I put in chat. Sure. Uh, and remember that this one, this last thing at the bottom is an article that will talk to you about the change in number of precincts and why and mm -hmm. and it's about it's about it's about the judges but also um it makes sense mm -hmm. I, I i think it's good to leave that in their own words because they worked really hard at that article <laughs> great all right well wonderful all right. thank you again catherine uh sure. Thanks everybody for the great conversation and well, thanks uh, for having me. Energized.